I'm Charlie French, Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Fish Commission. We would like you, the fishermen of Pennsylvania, to become better acquainted with the Commission and thought you might be interested in seeing and hearing about some of our activities, all of which are designed to bring about the best fishing possible in the lakes and streams of our state. Each year, over 700,000 men and women purchase a Pennsylvania fishing license. In addition to this number, there are at least a quarter of a million kiddies under 16 years of age who fish and do not require a license. So I think you will understand it is quite a problem to provide recreation for this vast number of people. Now I'd like to show you some of the highlights of our program. Pennsylvania has 10 modern fish farms. At six of these, trout are raised. Fish farms are not unlike poultry or cattle farms, for a crop of livestock is produced at each annually. Each year, over 100,000 people visit our fish farms, which are open for inspection seven days a week. Guided tours are arranged for children, conservation clubs, and other interested groups. The story of trout culture begins in the fall of the year when sexually mature trout are selected for stripping. By gentle pressure on the sides and belly of these ripe trout, Eggs from the female and milk from the male are forced into a basin where the two are mixed. Fertilization of the egg is almost instantaneous. A single female trout may produce as many as 3,000 eggs. After fertilization, water is added to the eggs and they are washed several times and then placed on trays in troughs of running water. Here they remain until hatching time. After a few weeks, the eyes of the developing embryo can be seen. At 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it takes about 45 days for brook trout eggs to hatch. Newly hatched trout are called sac fry. In about two weeks, the pear-shaped yolk sacs are absorbed and the little trout are ready to feed. Fish are livestock, the same as poultry or cattle, and require constant care the year around. This important work is entrusted to our fish culturists who have had many years of practical experience. Special care must be given each stage of the egg and the growing fish if a good trout suitable for planting in Pennsylvania waters is to be produced. The growing trout at our fish farms are for the most part held in ponds or raceways. Clean water must be furnished to trout in the proper volume and at good growing temperatures. Trout ponds must be cleaned periodically to lessen the possibility of a disease outbreak. As stocking time approaches, trout are sane from the ponds and returned to the hatching house where they are sorted, counted, and weighed. Spring water, when used for growing trout, may require aeration to remove harmful gases and ensure an adequate supply of dissolved oxygen a vital need of all fish. The feeding of fish in our hatcheries is a big job in itself, for it requires not only that the diet be nutritious and at the same time economical, but also that the food be prepared and fed in such a manner that it will be readily eaten. The Pennsylvania Fish Commission has developed a satisfactory diet consisting of marine fish and other animal products. We have found that our trout grow well on this diet. To give you an idea of the magnitude of our program, it requires over 2,000 tons of food per year to feed our growing fish. At a trout hatchery, as much as five tons may be fed in a single day at the height of the growing season. In keeping with the times, the cost of the living for trout has risen considerably during the past few years. However, by buying food in large quantities and storing at refrigeration plants at the various hatcheries, the Fish Commission has been able to keep the cost of the trout diet on an economical basis. Last year, our specially designed trucks transported two and a half million trout to streams and lakes all over the state, sometimes on dirt roads and often in bad weather. The total weight of these fish was over 400 tons.
Before April 15th of each year, these trucks will carry trout to well over 4,000 miles of streams or about the distance from New York City to San Francisco and back as far as Denver. To stock this mileage of streams, our trucks will drive about 400,000 miles or a distance equal to 16 times around the world. Actual planting of the fish is a cooperative project of our distribution agents or messengers, our fish wardens, and the local interested sportsmen. It would hardly be practical to, for the Fish Commission to send a crew of men with each truck. Thus, the fine cooperation of the sportsmen in helping to distribute these fish is indeed appreciated. The bulk of our trout are liberated just before or during the open season. The Fish Commission makes a fair distribution of trout as is possible in the public waters of the state. In setting up a stocking policy for any trout waters, we must be guided by the ability of that water to support trout, the fishing pressure expected, and many other factors. Fishing in lakes is gaining popularity in Pennsylvania. Our biologists, who are constantly conducting surveys in the field, have found a number of lakes which are biologically suited to trout. In former years, fishing in these lakes was quite largely limited to the summer months. Now, under intelligent management, which includes trout plantings, these lakes afford good fishing and anglers thereby gain two and a half additional months of fishing. so far has dealt largely with trout, we are equally interested in providing good fishing for bass, muskies, walleyes, pickerel, perch, and other warm water species. The Commission's management unit has been conducting thorough investigations of these waters for several years. These studies are in the form of a biological's inventory and include an analysis of all factors affecting fish life and fishing. The composition of the fish population in a lake one of the most important phases of this work is determined by the use of various type nets. By examining scales taken from fish, it is possible to tell how old they are and hence how rapid or how slow their growth. Technicians of our management unit conduct many other tests and determinations on these waters. A chemical analysis of the water from various levels must be made. A determination of temperatures from surface to bottom may be an index of the species of fish best adapted to a lake. The available fish food supply must be investigated. Spawning areas are located. Maps are prepared showing the contours of the lake bottom. A creel census is often conducted to learn the numbers and kinds of fish caught per unit of fishing effort. Sometimes in sampling fish populations, an overabundance of small panfish or coarse fish is found in a lake. Since this usually leads to poor fishing, measures are taken to alter the population. Draining a lake and removing the existing fish populations may be necessary in extreme cases. After refilling, the lake is restocked with the species of fish best adapted to the lake's environment. Thus a successful fish population is not determined by numbers of fish, since high numbers mean small fish. Rather, it is a suitable ratio of fish of all sizes, including many of catchable size. The continuous inventory of our lakes and streams is designed to bring the best possible management to our waters, and this, in turn, means good fishing. This is Dedication Day, or D-Day, on Virgin Run Lake in Fayette County. This is a new lake developed by the Fish Commission with the aid of federal money derived from an excise tax on fishing tackle plus Fish Commission funds. It is our desire in this portion of our program to bring lake fishing to those parts of the state where public fishing waters are now limited. Fish are stocked on D-Day and many people bring their fishing tackle and start fishing right away. The crowds at these ceremonies indicate the interest in these projects. Icedale Lake in Chester County, which is only an hour's drive from Philadelphia, was purchased under this program. We are currently making two plans to create another new lake in western Pennsylvania, which will be only 23 miles from downtown Pittsburgh. 
Our lake acquisition agents are searching constantly for lake sites located in areas where they will furnish fishing to the greatest number of anglers. Another public fishing lake recently completed and opened by the commission is Dumans Lake in Cambria County, which you see here on dedication day. This lake was paid for wholly from fish commission funds. To purchase a lake site and build a dam, thus providing a new lake, is expensive. However, when one considers the amount of wholesome recreation furnished to thousands of anglers over many years, the investment seems well worthwhile. As you may know, the, the general program of the Pennsylvania Fish Commission is 100% self-supporting, all of the work being financed solely by revenue from fishermen. Federal aid money may be applied only to certain projects approved by the Fish and Wildlife Service. The men in uniform are representatives of the Fish Commission's force of 56 fish wardens. Their main duty is to safeguard the interests of the fishermen and the commission. Although the Pennsylvania Fish Commission is a separate and distinct organization from the Pennsylvania Game Commission, there is a good spirit of cooperation between the two. This is evidenced particularly between the fish wardens and the game protectors who often join forces in their field problems. The opportunity to go fishing is an American heritage which we must safeguard for certainly no more natural or wholesome recreation can be found. Your Pennsylvania Fish Commission is dedicated to improving and expanding fishing of all kinds all over the Commonwealth. The next time you go fishing, take your boy or girl along. And even though it may seem a little more trouble, it will pay big dividends. I hope you have enjoyed seeing and hearing these highlights of your commission. And in closing, I'd just like to thank the hundreds of individuals and sportsmen groups throughout this Commonwealth who have for many, many years given us the very best cooperation possible. And all we ask is that you bring your problems to us as you have in the past, and I promise you that we'll do everything possible to cooperate and help you. Thank you very much.